In this video, we are going to see the pinch design method for a problem statement where stream splitting is, uh, you know, expected. So this is the uh, four stream problem where there are two hot stream again and two cold stream. The hot stream runs from 720 to 320 with its heat capacity 0.045. Second hot stream 520 to 220 with its heat capacity of 0 0.04. Cold stream 3 300 to 900 with 0 0.04 the heat capacity flow rate and cold stream 4 is 2 is going from 200 to 550 with 0 0.02 heat capacity flow rate. Based on PTA at delta T 20 delta T minimum 20 degrees Celsius minimum hot utility ut requirement for this problem is 9.2 megawatt and minimum cold utility requirement is 6.4 megawatt. Hot stream pinch point is 520 and cold stream pinch point is 500. Mind well, PTA will give you one pinch point. You have to, you know, add delta T minimum by 2 for the hot stream pinch and uh, subtract delta T minimum by 2 for the cold stream so that at pinch point, hot stream and cold stream are exactly delta T minimum away, which can be seen in the grid diagram here. If this two are 520, this is 500. So this will always maintain delta T minimum, which is 20 in this case. If this it would have been something else, then accordingly the temperature would have come, right? So these are actual temperature grid diagram are actual temperature and not shifted temperature, which I think I have forgot to mention in my earlier videos. But I think it is clear and it is very much visible that we are not using the shifted temperature which we are using in PTA analysis. So that shifted temperature will help us to identify the pinch point, minimum hot utility, cold utility. But then we try to make the network the actual temperature will come into picture right and as we can see above pinch there is one hot stream and two cold stream below pinch two hot streams and two cold streams right as per the requirement we require above pinch number of hot stream less than or equal to cold stream so there is no problem as far as number of the streams are concerned right and we require cp hot to be less than or equal to cpc and as we can see here that the cp hot for stream number 1 is 0 0.045 and for the two cold stream which are there it is 0 0.043 and 0 0.02 that means we cannot exchange the energy between these two at pinch point because as i told you we start with the pinch point region always and if i try to exchange energy between this and this and when this converges because this temperature or this cp is low and hence its slope will be more so when it converges the outlet, you know, of this uh, particular exchanger, if I try to match it here, will have delta T, which is, uh, you know, less than 20. In the same way, the, here also it will happen because here the slope will be much more compared to this and your delta T will be, delta T minimum will be violated. And hence, what we need to do is we will have to split the hot stream so that its individual uh, heat capacity flow rate goes down. 0 0.043 and 0 0.02 respectively. So that will be uh, you know seen in the next uh, slide. On right hand side we have got CPH greater than CPC. So that is something which we can always uh, you know uh, make places make uh, match places with the required amount of energy exchange. So looking at the next slide. So as discussed, we need to split stream number one, that is hot stream, so that the CP values of the individual hot streams are below 0 0.04 and 0 0.02 respectively. Right. Now, here in this particular diagram, though the values are mentioned here, it is not necessary to directly, you know, uh, label the values or identify the numerical value of uh, heat capacity of the stream. What we can do is we can write here CPA. And this equals to 0 0.045 minus CPA because that was the heat capacity flow rate, right? It is 0 0.045. So I am splitting this. What I mean uh, by splitting is I am splitting the mass flow rate. Since I am splitting the flow rate, the heat capacity also will change. Only thing which I need to make sure now is that if I want to exchange the energy between this stream which I call as say 1A and this as 1B or this might be 1A, this might be 1B but this is the two portion of the stream which starts at 720 and when it means here the temperature becomes 520. So 
if this is CPA, right, and I want to exchange energy of this stream with this particular cold stream, and I have to make sure that this heat capacity is less than or equal to 0 0.043. And if I want to exchange this particular stream portion of the stream with this, the heat capacity that is 0 0.045 minus CP has to be less than or equal to 0 0.02 because my hot stream's heat capacity will have to be less than that of cold stream. So that is something which is the requirement. So right now if I want to exchange that which is which is the case, what I will do is I just write the range CPA has to be less than or equal to 0 0.043 and CP of this stream which is nothing but 0 0.045 minus CPA will have to be less than or equal to 0 0.0. Two. So, say for example, if my point, my CPA is 0 0.04, right, then, uh, you know, uh, for other stream, it will be 0 0.005. So, it will definitely, it will match the, it will, it will uh, satisfy the required condition, correct. So, right now, I am not defining what is the value of CPA. We will define the value of CPA at a later stage. So, though, in the print, it, in this uh, slide, it has been mentioned, we will discuss how are we arriving at this because a very basic question comes. Why, point, why 0 0.04 and 0 0.005? Why not 0 0.041 and 0 0.004? Both of them are also correct. 0 0.042 and 0 0.003. Again correct. So, there could be a range. So, we must understand that there could be a range of heat capacity value for the two streams. This, these values are arriving at a specific kind of, you know, operation which we will discuss as we proceed further. Now, if I want to exchange the energy, right, again I will do the same thing. I will calculate the energy associated with the stream and uh, individual stream above pinch and below pinch. So, uh, when there is a splitting of stream, what we will do is we will calculate the energy for this streams. So, this stream has the requirement of the different kind of energy that is 8 megawatt and 1 megawatt, right. So, this goes from 500 to 900, uh, 500 to 900. So, this 400 multiplied by 0 0.043 and 50 multiplied by 0 0.02 will give me the answer is 7.2 megawatt this and 1 megawatt here. So, what I will do is I will have see total requirement here is see total energy with this particular stream in total can give you is 200 into 0 0.045 that is 9 megawatt. So, my total energy or enthalpy associated with these two streams are 9 total. When that 9 is given away it runs from 720 to 520. So, since I have bifurcated CPA, right, my energy is also bifurcated. So, this, if I am exchanging it with this and this is exchanging with this, what I will do is, I will exchange this with this and satisfy the requirement of 1 megawatt. So, if this particular stream gives away 1 megawatt, this stream can give away remaining energy. So, total energy associated with stream 1 is 9. So, 9 minus 1 making it 8. So, this will an exchange, the remaining will exchange 8 megawatt. And thereby, this stream requirement is satisfied. So, this has come from 720 to 520. When you mix these two streams, when you mix this outlet with this outlet, it will come at 520 because it has given away total 9 megawatt. I hope this is clear to everybody. So, that is what has been done here. 8 megawatt and 1 megawatt. Still, I am not defining CP values. Though it is mentioned in the slide, I, am, I have still not defined it CP values, right? The requirement here is 7, 17.2. So, this is ticked off. This is ticked off. And hence, what I have is remaining hot utility, which I will supply, which is equivalent to 9.2, which is already mentioned in the, uh, you know, calculated PTA value. So, this becomes my, you know, uh, diagram. This becomes my energy network or heat exchanger network, right? Similarly, on the right hand side, since there is no, uh, you know, uh, requirement as far as CP values were concerned, as far as the amount of uh, uh, values of CP, uh, uh, number of uh, hot and uh, cold streams were concerned, I have directly places the matches, right? That is stream number 1 with stream number 3, exchanging 8.6 megawatt, stream number 2 with stream number 4, exchanging 6 megawatt, 
and remaining 6.4 as two cooling utilities at sim number one and two respectively so i think uh, looking at previous video you can uh, understand and put this particular uh, exchanger networking uh, here below pinch region come back to the above pinch region where we will, we are still to define cpa and 0.04 minus cpa value so for that what we do is as as we define this as cpa and 0.045 minus cpa i am talking about the cp value of these two streams what i can do is after knowing the amount of energy it has exchanged right that is 8 and 1 I can, you know, calculate the value of outlet temperatures of these two streams, that is this stream and this stream. So, how do I do that? I know that delta H is Cp delta T, right? And hence, my delta T is nothing but delta H upon Cp. So, for this particular stream, my delta H is 8, Cp is Cpa. And delta T could can be written as 720 minus X, right? So I can find out the you know value of this temperature if I know the value of CPA. In the same way, for this particular stream, I can write 1 equals to 0 0.045 minus CPA because the heat capacity of second stream is this multiplied by 720 minus x dash right so that is the temperature that this equation can give you the temperature of this stream now see when you are you know uh, splitting them at another junction you will be mixing them so when you mix if both the temperature are identical that junction is known as isothermal junction right so if i can bifurcate the value of cpa in such a way that this temperature which is denoted by x in the equation and this temperature which is denoted by x dash in this equation are identical in our case 520 so if they are identical i can solve you know if x and x dash x dash are same i can solve this equation for cpa by equating x and x dash both of both of them equal so that is what i have done in the next slide so my h1a cpa which is 720 this is the temperature at the cold end so i have just i have just you know uh, simplified this equation and i have said that x1 x1 or, or x here is 8 upon cpa 720 so this x goes here this cpa becomes 8 by 8 upon cpa and x becomes 720 minus 8 upon cpa and in the same way for the other stream the cooling end is 720 minus 1 upon 0 0.045 minus cpa so these are the temperatures x and x dash so if x and x days are same this particular uh, you know uh, mixing uh, mix junction is called as isothermal junction so if i equate this two right i'll get the value of cpa so what is the value of cpa which i get if i equate this two i'll get cpa equals to 0 0.04 that is this right so that means that i get a isothermal junction and for isothermal junction my cpa value has to be 0 0.04 now it is quite possible that not every splitted stream can form an isothermal junction one thing to be very much be cleared about is that when they are mixed the temperature will be the final temperature for sure so it will be always 520 but that 520 can be achieved by you know mixing this two with 600 and maybe 5 uh, 600 and 460 or maybe 700 and you know 6 uh, you know 4 or uh, uh, 320 something like that so it could be a mixture it may not be an isothermal but in this case if it is if we split it as 0 0.04 and 0 0.045 both the temperatures would be identical and it will be 520 so if isothermal junction is not possible this cpa value would come in such a way that you will not be able to you know maintain this or 0 0.045 minus cpa less than or equal to 0 0.02 one of this would be violated and if that violates you have to say that isothermal junction is not possible and then you can keep any value of cpa which follows the required rule that is for cpa and 0 0.045 cpa so i hope it would be clear that how do you allot the value of cpa right we will try to keep isothermal junction if possible but if isothermal junction is not possible you can keep any value of cpa 
which ultimately you know uh, will follow this two conditions right so we'll meet in next video with some more examples